advanced training techniques, things like drop sets, force reps, and rest pause training are often used with the claim of getting a greater training stimulus and thus more hypertrophy. However, the effectiveness of these advanced strategies is often overstated, but today we're gonna to discuss a specific advanced training technique that you've probably never heard of. Now, after we investigate this technique, you'll also have a framework for hypertrophy that you can use for the rest of your training as well. What's going on? My name is Josh Pelland. I'm a strength coach and exercise scientist. I'm also a co-owner here at Data Driven Strength, and if you're new here, we help lifters maximize strength and hypertrophy by integrating research into practice. Now with that, let's jump right into the advanced training technique that you've probably never heard of. What we see here is called burnout mode on a tonal device. Tonal doesn't use traditional weights and instead uses what's called electromagnetic resistance. The feel for the lifter is similar to just a traditional cable machine, but the device allows for automated and rapid load adjustments. So when using the burnout mode, the device recognizes when you cannot produce enough force to overcome the resistance and automatically reduces the load. In this set that you see here, the device detected that I could no longer produce the force required to complete the eighth rep. So in other words, I may have failed around the eighth rep with normal resistance. And this process is repeated until five pounds is all that is remaining. And in this set, I was able to get 16 total reps, but the load decreased from 33 pounds per arm in rep eight to five pounds throughout reps eight through 16. Now, to my knowledge, the hypertrophic effects of this method have not been directly investigated. However, we can of course draw on other research to hypothesize just how effective it is. A term that gets discussed a lot is that of quote unquote effective reps for hypertrophy. Now people use this term in a lot of different ways, but drawing on the longitudinal hypertrophy research, it generally seems that reps closer to failure are more effective than reps that are further from failure. And a recent pre-printed meta-regression provides a nice visual of this. However, it's important to note that A, reps quite far from failure are likely still at least somewhat effective, and B, we don't know exactly how much more effective those reps closer to failure are. But caveats aside, we can use this rough effective reps concept to think about the burnout mode and how effective it is for hypertrophy. So we can have some degree of confidence that reps closer to failure are generally more effective for hypertrophy than those that are further from failure. We also know that even if you're pushing as hard as you can on the concentric or the upward phase of a movement, repetition velocity decreases as you get closer to failure. So we can use that slow repetition velocity as a rough indicator of kind of the effectiveness of the repetition. So at this point, with that in mind, you might be thinking that the burnout mode is the holy grail of hypertrophy training because you can accumulate many more slow reps than you would in any other condition that you can achieve with just regular free weights. However, to bring us back to earth, we need to zoom out and realize that not all reps are created equal and that's due to fatigue. In other words, if I achieve a very slow rep, perhaps 0.15 meters per second velocity, in scenario A, and let's say that scenario A is a set I went into with very low fatigue, such as the first set of a session. And let's compare that to scenario B, um, a set I went into with very high fatigue, similar in concept to the very end of a protocol using the burnout mode. Now, I wouldn't expect these to be the same hypertrophic stimulus, despite the velocity being the same. And ultimately, this comes from our reading of the literature in two areas. The first is the rest period research, which compares muscle growth between protocols with shorter versus longer rest between sets. And what we generally see in this research is that longer rest periods lead to more muscle growth. The second is the drop set research, which compares traditional sets to a protocol that does a normal set but then immediately does one or multiple drops 
and performs more reps after those drops. So this might look like, say, a set to failure with 30 pound dumbbells, and then an immediate drop and set to failure with 20 pound dumbbells, followed by perhaps another drop and set to failure with perhaps the 10 pound dumbbells. And the most recent meta-analysis in the area of drop sets comes from Coleman and colleagues, and they found comparable hypertrophy between traditional and drop set protocols. However, if we take a closer look at the studies that went into that drop set meta-analysis, and we count all of the sets, including the lower load sets in the drop set groups, those drop set groups performed 32% more total sets on average. And if we were to compare two different groups with uh, what I would call equalized fatigue, so straight set training versus straight set training, I would expect a 32% difference in volume to show up as more hypertrophy in a meta-analysis. However, that didn't happen. And it might just be the fatigue that was present going into the drop sets that slightly diminished the hypertrophic stimulus and thus led to similar hypertrophy between traditional training and drop set training in the meta-analysis. So put simply, slow reps are probably more effective for hypertrophy than faster reps on average. But a slow rep achieved with high fatigue going into the set is likely less effective than an equally slow rep achieved with low fatigue going into the set. So on one hand, burnout mode allows for very efficient accumulation of a lot of slow reps. However, the high fatigue that contributes to the reps being slow, especially near the end of a burnout mode protocol, likely attenuates the hypertrophic stimulus at least to some degree. It might not be massive, but that would be my hypothesis based on the current evidence. This means that you're probably not just stacking a ton of maximally effective reps using something like burnout mode. However, you are able to stack a lot of pretty effective reps with an approach like this, which is quite an efficient way to train. And personally, uh, when I'm time restricted, my go-to is to do one to two all out sets using burnout mode. Now you may not have access to something like burnout mode, but you can achieve a pretty similar effect using drop sets or rest pause training. I don't like to program these sorts of methods for the bulk of a training program, but they can be a really enjoyable way to finish a training session or an efficient and effective way to accumulate a lot of decently effective reps when crunched for time. All right, guys, hopefully this video helped you conceptualize what makes a rep effective for hypertrophy and gives you a framework for your own program design. Now, this is a very nuanced topic. There's a lot of unknowns in the research, and there's just a lot more to talk about here. So be sure that you're subscribed to our podcast, which is linked in the description, as we'll be releasing an episode soon discussing some of the finer details of this topic. But in the meantime, you can check out our video on power building to better understand other training variables that are important for hypertrophy training.